If you've been watching any of my videos lately, you might have noticed that I've been using Linux for quite some time now. I mean, I freaking love Linux. I think it's amazing. It's a great environment not only for programming, for programmers like myself, but also for just customization and flexibility overall. I mean, you can install Linux on a freaking toaster if you wanted to. And my favorite way to customize Linux is with using a tiling window manager. And specifically, I'm talking about Hyperland. I've been using it for a while and oh my God, it's awesome. Now as a programmer, Hyperland gets me into a float state really fast. I can just flip through all my windows, go through all my workspaces, and my hand never leaves the keyboard. And so I feel like I'm just in the flow state and I never have to leave. It's amazing. I love it so much. But wait, what the hell is a tiling window manager and why should I care? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to show you how tiling window managers are so amazing. We're going to talk about what a tiling window manager is. We're going to talk about Hyperland. And then we're also going to go through building a basic configuration to get you started on Hyperland yourself. So stick around, this will be a fun one. So what is a tiling window manager exactly? Well, a tiling window manager is a window manager that manages your windows in a tile-like fashion. Here, let me explain. You see, in a typical window management experience, like let's say here I have GNOME. With GNOME, it's a normal desktop environment. The way that windows are managed is that when I open a new window, like say my browser, it opens it in a floating way. These windows, I can move around with my mouse and I just manually kind of manage them. Let me open one more thing, like the terminal here. I manage my windows and they're kind of stacking, right? This is a stacking window management system and they sort of float. So I use my mouse to manage them and that's just kind of how it works. Now this differs a lot from a tiling window manager. Let's check out a tiling window manager. I have Hyperland right here, which by the way, this is the exact setup I'm going to show you how to build in this little mini series on Hyperland. So stick around because we're going to build this exact thing. But in Hyperland, what we do is when we open a window, let's say we open our terminal, it takes up the whole entire screen. You can see right here, our terminal took up the whole screen. So now let me launch my, I don't know, my web browser. If I open my web browser, it takes up half the screen and we can see that there's no overlapping between these two windows. This is how a tiling window manager works. Now, if I want to open up another terminal, I can open up there and then I'll open another one up there. And this is just a layout that the tiling window manager gives me. But the greatest thing about this is I can flip through all my windows super easily just using my Vim key bindings. If I hold down alt or rather my super key and I go through my windows, it's amazing. It's so quick. It makes me feel like a hacker. Like it's unbelievable. I can open a new workspace, open my terminal, go back to my previous workspace. It's so fast. It's so effortless and it's amazing. I really love it. Now, tiling window manager just unlocks a whole new level of productivity for me as a programmer. But as a content creator, I'm always looking for ways to be more productive, which brings me to our video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions, or side hustles to the next level. Now at Typecraft, I use Notion to write all of my scripts and my content and to just organize all of my stuff. So on Skillshare here, I'm actually going to be taking this class by Ali Abdal called Notion Masterclass, Maximize Your Productivity and Organization. This looks like exactly what I need to boost my productivity in Notion. And don't forget, you programmers out there, Skillshare has amazing programming and Linux courses as well. The first 500 people, that's right, 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month of Skillshare for free. So get started today. All right. Now let's get back to learning about tiling window managers. Okay, so what is Hyperland? You see, there are many different tiling window managers out there and Hyperland aims to be a lightweight and feature rich tiling window manager built for the Wayland display server protocol. Okay, that sentence might sound a little insane. Let's back this up a little bit. So there are two main display server protocols for Linux. The one that's the de facto standard for Linux right now is the X11 window system. Now this has been around since the 80s and although it is rock solid and it's doing 
okay, it's starting to show its age, specifically around high DPI monitors. Like the more modern things that we want our display systems to sort of render on, it's just not doing that well. There's also security concerns along with a lot of other things. So there have been developments on a new Windows Server protocol and they're calling it Wayland. Now Wayland aims to be a much more modern version of the X11 Windows system with better security features and generally just a different approach to actually rendering things with compositors and composite window managers. Now you can see right here, there's a sentence that says a display server using the Wayland protocol is called a Wayland compositor because it additionally performs the tasks of a compositing window manager. So if you're choosing a window management option for Linux, you would want to choose something on Wayland because it's the more modern window composite management system. And Hyperland is a lightweight and feature rich window compositor built on the more modern Wayland protocol, meaning it has more modern features than other tiling WMs that are still built for X11. And it's got the newest and best stuff. Like it works great with high DPI monitors and everything else. All right, so enough talk. Let's install Hyperland and give it a whirl. Let's see what it's all about. Now, Hyperland is available for basically every Linux distribution out there. I'm on Arch by the way, so I can install it with Pac-Man. Now, the very first thing I wanna tell you though, is you want to install one prerequisite before you install Hyperland. It's kind of a weird one, but I'll explain it in a second. The prerequisite you wanna install is the terminal emulator called Kitty. So for me, I'm gonna type sudo pacman-s kitty to install kitty. I want to make sure this terminal is installed specifically and I'll show you in just one second. Then once kitty is installed, we can install Hyperland. Make sure you spell it right. And there you go. Hyperland is installed. So now what you do is you log out of your desktop environment or whatever you're using. And when you log back in, you should see Hyperland on the list of possible display managers that you can log into. So let's do that now. Okay. So now we're logged back into our system and we can see I chose Hyperland. We launched Hyperland and now we see our beautiful Hyperland experience. Well, okay, it's not that pretty right now, but you see, that's kind of the point. Hyperland doesn't give you a whole lot out of the box. You have to start configuring it. So now that we've launched Hyperland, what we're going to do is we're gonna go over some of our basic configurations and cover the basic tools necessary to have a functioning tiling window manager, including basic configurations for our windows, a good scaling and resolution for our monitor, because right now it's just not scaling correctly. It's super, super small. We're gonna go over a launcher, how to launch our programs and a cool status bar. And we're just going to do the basics here. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're not going to have this amazing experience. If you want to see a really nicely riced uh, environment, then subscribe because we're going to do that in the next episode. But this is just going to cover the basics. Okay. So we can see that there is when we start up an error that says warning, you're using an auto generated config. So we want to type either super Q to launch kitty or super M to exit hyperland. Now, first of all, it's actually good that we see that super M will exit Hyperland for us because it's good to know if we want to exit Hyperland to fix something in our desktop environment that we're more comfortable with, then we can launch back into Hyperland. It's nice to know that that exists. All right, so what we want to do here is actually launch Kitty. So let's type super Q. Now super for me is what normally is the option key on like a Mac OS keyboard. It might be alt or option for you if you have a Windows layout. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to type super Q, which for me again is sort of the option key for me, or maybe it's the Windows key for you if you're on a Windows machine. And again, this is why I said we want to install Kitty first because Hyperland loves using Kitty as its default terminal emulator. So just by installing Kitty, it kind of gets this initial roadblock out of the way for us. So we can launch Kitty with Super Q and uh, the error kind of takes up a little bit for us here, but we got out of the error. So now let's open our configuration. We can see in the error, it says the config file is located in config hyper hyper land.conf. All right, great. And wow, this font is super tiny, but I can see right here, just in the top left, there's this auto generated equals one line. Let's see if I can move this font up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So auto generated equals one. It says remove this line to remove the warning. Okay. So we can remove this line to remove the warning. And then we can write our file and huh, interesting. It looks like the error has actually gone away. Isn't that cool? Okay. So that's awesome. And that's, that's actually one of the first things I want to talk about with Hyperland is that our config configuration gets auto reloaded by Hyperland by default. So as soon as you change something in the config, you'll either get the new 
thing in your config or a warning saying that your config was incorrect, if it was incorrect at all. Okay, so now that we have fixed that error, I want to do the very first thing in this configuration, which is let's fix this 4K resolution scaling here. Now we can scale our resolution on this monitor in Hyperland, and this is a really good time to mention something called Hypercuddle. Now Hypercuddle is a CLI program that allows you to mess with Hyperland settings and do some actions within Hyperland. So if we type Hypercuddle, we can see that there's a lot of different options here. You can do a lot of stuff with Hypercuddle. It's very powerful. You should look at the documentation. But for us, we want to type Hypercuddle monitors all. Now that will give us a list of the monitors currently connected to our Hyperland instance here, right? So I can see right here, I have this monitor. We have the built-in one for our machine, which is running at you know 1080p. And then we have this monitor right here, which is a 4K monitor. So let's change the scaling on it. We wanna go back to our configuration. So let's go to config hyper hyperland.conf and let's scroll down and we see, oh, we see an entry right here that mentions monitor. So let's copy this line and paste a new one and actually let's uh, quit vim really quick because we want to copy the monitor name for this config so let's copy that and let's reopen our configuration. So now we see we have an entry for monitor, which if there's nothing to the left of this comma, that means it matches on every monitor. And preferred is the preferred resolution. And then auto is our position. And the last argument here is the scale. So let's make a new entry here for our monitor that we have connected to this computer. We want the preferred resolution, which is 4K right now. The position is auto. And I think that's just normal positioning. But the scale, we want to change that to, um, let's say, 1.6 and let's see what happens here oh and that's it when you write our file it automatically updates our configuration in hyperland so now we can see that we are actually on a 1.6 scaled resolution for this monitor so now let's exit our terminal and reopen it with super q and yeah this is it this is our terminal and now it looks a lot better i have to update our font a little bit but nowhere near the amount i had to before okay so now that we have our monitor situation kind of figured out we're going to actually want to launch some programs i mean that seems like a fairly standard thing that you'd want to do in your Linux distribution, right? No matter what you're using, a tiling window manager, a desktop environment, whatever, you want to launch some programs. Now, again, Hyperland, much like other tiling window managers, is very bare bones. It doesn't even come with a program launcher, but we can get some clues as to what Hyperland wants to use by default by checking our config. Once again, config hyperland, hyperland.conf. Now we can search for some stuff. We can scroll around and we can find that uh, right here it says menu. It sets a variable called menu to a program called Wafi. Now, Wofi or Wafi, however you would pronounce it, is a launching program, a program launcher for Linux environments, specifically for Wayland. So let's install Wofi and let's just see if we can't get this thing working. Okay, so I'm going to hit super Q to open a new terminal. Isn't this fun? We're already having fun here. And in this new terminal, I want to up my font just a little bit and I want to type sudo pacman dash s Wofi enter my password. Okay, so now Wofi should be installed. I can exit that terminal. And let me see, where do we use this menu thing? Okay, so again, in the configuration for Hyperland, it's very straightforward to kind of feel your way around and see what Hyperland wants to do. We can see that Wofi is executed by calling main mod R. So what is main mod? Oh, main mod is super. So calling super R should open Wofi, which is going to be our new program launcher. So let's type super R. And of course, there it is. Awesome. So we already have a lot of stuff working for us here. So if we just hit enter on our browser, we can see that it'll open our browser. Okay, great. So now we have a launcher and we have our configuration sort of set up for our 4k monitor. This is going really well so far. I like where we're going here. Okay, so now that we have a launcher and we're launching programs, we have our terminal open, we have our browser open, I think now is a good time to explain how to actually move around Hyperland and show off some of its quirks and features when it comes to window management. So Hyperland is really interesting the way it manages windows. It has a specific layout that it wants you to follow. Now you can toggle this in your configuration if you want. It's typically off the master layout, right? Yes. Now the master layout, I'm not going to get into too much depth here, but it uses an algorithm that will open windows based on what windows you currently have open. And you can see that it kind of already guesses the layout that I want. You can see it opens sort of these new tabs at the very bottom 
bottom or these new panes rather at the bottom of my screen and so um it kind of just is a good way to sort of guess like how you'd want your windows open that's pretty good but there's a lot more to managing your windows in hyperland than just that so when you open new windows you can switch between them by holding super and using your directional keys so you can see that my right window is now highlighted because i went right and my left window is now highlighted because i went left now what i love is your mouse will also follow with your window so you can see my mouse went over here and if i go to the left pane my mouse is now over on the left i think that's super helpful to keep your mouse in the context of the window that it's within the window that you have focused currently and now that i have these two windows open i can move them around a couple of different ways my favorite is to hold down the super key and just drag one with my mouse and drag it over to this side and let go now i can drag these things between their positions and sort of move them around if i want to you can also use the keyboard to change which windows on which workspace by default we're on workspace one right here if i want to move this window to workspace two i would hold shift and super and type the number two now that moves this to workspace two we are on workspace two right now so now if i type uh super one i go back to workspace one super two goes back to workspace two so one two one two this is pretty awesome. It's, it, it's so cool when you have a lot of windows open, you can just fly through all your workspaces so easily and effortlessly by just using your keyboard. It truly is like the most fun way to use computers in my mind, at least. I don't know about you, but this, I always love this. Tiling window managers are amazing when it comes to navigating all of the things that you currently have running on your system. So now let's open up a new workspace and we can launch a new thing. Let's say we want to launch by typing super R, let's launch, uh, I don't know, files like so our file browser now so now we have a file browser on workspace three on workspace two we have our browser and then on workspace one we have our terminal which is pretty cool but we kind of run into an issue here that issue is i don't know which workspace i'm currently on and you see that's because hyperland doesn't really give you a status bar out of the box but you probably want one i mean i know i would i would want a status bar for any linux distribution tiling window manager desktop environment whatever i want a status bar so i can see what workspace I'm on, what programs maybe I have running, and like just some things about my computer, like the battery life, the current time, stuff like that. Let's check out our configuration again to see if we have some other hints as to what a good status bar would be for Hyperland. And again, we're just going over the basics here. So if you scroll down a little bit, we find a little entry in our configuration for auto start. Now, auto start is a very powerful thing we can do in Hyperland. It allows you to execute arbitrary programs or scripts when your computer starts up in Hyperland, okay? Now under this auto start mention, we see that we have exec once, waybar, and hyperpaper and Firefox. Now waybar I know is a status bar for Wayland that is very popular and it looks like Hyperland wants waybar to be its default status bar. So let's install waybar now and see how that works. Now of course being on Arch, we do sudo pacman-s and type waybar password of course okay now waybar is installed okay so now that waybar is installed the easiest way i find to sort of debug waybar is to just sort of run it from your terminal just like this just type waybar and hit enter and look up at the top we actually have our status bar isn't that cool like waybar just kind of loaded for us that's pretty neat but i noticed something and that is some of these fonts don't look very good that's because waybar requires you to have font awesome on your system in order to enable some of the glyphs that it likes to show you by default Okay, so let's install Font Awesome. So let's control C out of Waybar and we can type sudo pacman s ttf font dash awesome. This will install all of the font awesome language glyphs and icons into our system and then Waybar should now look good. So now let's type Waybar to run it again. And then there we go. All of our icons are there. It actually looks really nice. If you scroll up here, this is looking pretty good. Now I want to, for display purposes, just change the scaling on my monitor. So I can go to config hyperland hyperland.conf and my monitor I want to actually be on not 1.6 but let's put it on 2 so for the rest of this video it'll be a little bit bigger and easier to see things like like waybar right so now let's run waybar again our config auto reloaded and there we go waybar is right there it looks really good it's very promising out of the box and I'm excited about it but there's something I don't love and that is we don't actually see our workspaces and one of the main use cases for me to use the status bar is to see what 
what workspace I'm on just to sort of have context of where I am in my system right now, okay? So let's check out how we can change our workspaces in Waybar. So now if we go to the Waybar GitHub page under configuration, we can see a couple of interesting things here, right? So the configuration typically wants to live in config slash Waybar. So we know where to put our configuration file, but what do we put in the configuration file? Well, it says a good starting point is the default config, but there's also other examples. So check these out if you're interested. I'm just gonna start with the default config and go from there. So we click on default config and we want to copy the raw file here. So that is now copied in our clipboard. Let's go back to our terminal and we can create our new Waybar configuration file. So let's create config waybar slash config. That is the name of the file that waybar expects to be the configuration file. Now that we're in the file, we can paste everything we just copied and let's right quit and let's launch waybar again. Okay, great. So Waybar seems to be doing the same thing it was doing before. So let's quit Waybar. Now let's open our config Waybar config file again. So Waybar has what's called modules. That's how it splits up the little things that you see on the actual status bar itself. So if we go into our Waybar configuration file, we should be able to see the different modules that are currently enabled. So let's go into our Waybar configuration file and we can see on modules left, we have Sway workspaces, Sway mode, Sway scratch pad. The thing is we're not on Sway, we're on Hyperland. So we don't want any of these things in here. So let's delete Sway mode. Let's delete Sway scratch pad. I'm also gonna delete custom media and I'm going to put in here Hyperland workspaces because that's the name of the module for the Hyperland workspaces. Okay, so now we also have a module center here for Sway window. I think there's Hyperland window as well. So let's see how that works. So now let's run Waybar again and see what we got. Okay, awesome. So now it looks like we have our workspaces on the left. In the middle, we have the current name of our current window. And yes, that's correct. Now we can see that it has the name of the current website we're on in our browser. And if we go back to our previous workspace, it has Waybar, which is the name of the program that's running in our terminal. So this is great. Waybar seems to be working pretty well, but it's not really indicating the workspace that I'm currently on. So let's change that a little bit. We can go back to our configuration file for Waybar. If we scroll down just a little bit, we should see some configuration lines around the Sway workspaces, which is actually going to be Hyperland workspaces. And uh, so let's uncomment this configuration here really quick. I'm just gonna make a quick macro to uncomment this. Reset, escape, down. Mm -hmm. And then Q to quit that. Now add Q, add Q. Now let's do five, add Q. Okay. So now we have uncommented the actual workspaces configuration. And I want to get rid of uh, these things because I'm not actually going to launch certain programs in specific workspaces. You can if you want. And if you do that, this would be a cool option to have. What this does is it sets icons for certain workspace numbers. I don't really care about that. What I care about is I want the current workspace to actually have some kind of an icon next to it so that I know that that's the workspace I'm currently on, if that makes sense. So now if I right and quit this file, if I then launch Waybar again, let's see what we get. Okay, so it looks like we have our status bars and we have an icon, but that's not quite exactly what we want. So let's reopen our configuration file. Config, Waybar, Config. So I can see that um, this format icons uh, gives me the icons for workspaces that are currently urgent, focused, or default. Now, I think the keyword I'm looking for is active. I want my active workspace to have a certain icon associated with it. So let's write that file and then let's restart Waybar and see. And yes, now we can see that as we switch our workspaces, the active workspace gets a special icon. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to make sure Waybar actually starts whenever we log into Hyperland. So the way we do that is to use the exec once action in our Hyperland configuration. So let's open up our Hyperland config by config hyper hyperland.conf. And we can scroll down to where we have some exec once entries. And somewhere below this, let's enter exec once equals 
Waybar. So now, whenever we load Hyperland, we will load Waybar. So now let's log out of Hyperland, re-log in, and make sure Waybar is running. I hit Super M to log out, and then we wait. Okay, so we've logged out, and then we've logged back into our system, and we can see that Waybar is running, and it looks beautiful. Okay, great. So what have we done here? Well, we have an application launcher, we have a status bar, we have a terminal, and we have all of the knowledge that we need in order to manage our panes, our windows, and our workspaces in Hyperland. What's next? Well, our configuration has a lot to be desired, right? First of all, how do we take screenshots and how do we do other things? So in the next video, I'm going to cover utilities. I'm going to cover all that stuff. and We're going to make this configuration look gorgeous. So subscribe and join us for the next video where we make it look unbelievable. And hey, thanks nerds.